All right, this is your Bolo Punch Boxing Hour, brought to you by George Rogie Insurance, www.bolopunchboxinghour.com, streaming to you live, as always, on Ustream.tv. We just finished our first hour on the air, and now we are getting to our topic tonight. We've got to talk Pacquiao and Cotto. Um, I want to hear what everyone in the message board uh uh, the chat room wants to uh, wants to discuss. I want I want to get all their picks. We're going to make our official picks here, and I'm going to talk about the official picks of some uh, champions and former champions um, that I spoke to on the phone earlier today. Um, it's not um, at quite as exciting a list as the one that uh, that um, uh, Dan Raphael listed today because he spoke to George Foreman and you know he, he spoke to a lot of big names. I spoke to some a lot of big names, but. My list doesn't compare to his list. Yeah, yours is more the the B level, and his is more the A level. I wouldn't say that. There are some A list players on my list, but he's, an a plus he's got longer he's got longer reach than I do. <laughs> he's got longer reach than I do. But um, but no, we we got some 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 A A level talent on, on our list here. But um, first of all, Pacquiao and Cotto, they're fighting uh, this Saturday night at a catchweight. Therefore, they are fighting for the WBC Diamond Belt. Whatever. I don't know. The even WBC know. Diamond you know what? Belt. I don't even want to know. You can't. Don't tell me. You can't defend <laughs> this belt. You can't defend the belt. You just get it. It won't ever be. It Ted DiBiase. You just get it. It's just, a, it's, it's just a gift. <laughs> you just take it and you just put it up on your wall. It's you yours. Get it it's it's an actual. Dollar dream. It's, it's actually. <laughs> The the point to the the term prize fight. It's whoever wins, whoever wins gets this, and it's covered with diamonds and rubies and emeralds and craziness. Also, they threw in just for flavor, and I don't know who they is, but they are the WBO in this case. They they're throwing in their super champ belt because they because they know just a slight less than the super duper champ. They know the <laughs> super <laughs> duper. <laughs> That's one step in the super, super, duper. That was funny. That was that was not. But this was funny. <laughs> <laughs> so what the WBO decided was, since everyone's going to be taking pictures of this awesome uh, million-dollar DBIC belt, Give the, me super duper chain. let's put the super <laughs> duper belt in there as well. And so for this WBO super duper championship belt, uh, they listed on, um, I believe it was Fight News uh, this morning, what the stipulations are, how cool it is to own the WBO Super Duper Championship <laughs> belt. And including, if you win this belt, you get an extension of mandatory title defenses, which my lawyers will interpret as, I can keep it forever. <laughs> extension of mandatory title defense. That means I don't ever have to defend it, and I can just keep it. I'll just pin it to my wall. <laughs> I was going to say, my union sucks at times, but we can defend that one. Yeah. Uh, consideration as a mandatory challenger, which means you can fight any time for a real WBO belt. I don't know. That's like you stay at the Holiday Inn, and you can also <laughs> stay at the Hampton. You get a coupon in the room. It, it makes no no difference. And uh, also, if you get the WBO Super Duper Championship belt, <laughs> you get and you are an honorary lifetime member of the WBO, which I hear comes along with a really cool parking sticker. So I don't know <laughs> what the hell is the big deal about this WBO Super Championship belt. Keep saying Super Duper. I like it. <laughs> That's Super Duper. <laughs> I wanna, I with this belt in the quarter, <laughs> you can make a phone call. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> it's like Edward Stratton the Second's um, duck phone that he had on his desk. Do you remember su Silver Spoons? <laughs> Silver Duper Spoons. Anyway, all right. There were a couple problems with Pacquiao. Th there are problems with both fighters, and I want to talk about the negatives here. Um, the whispers behind Pacquiao were that Oscar was old and spent. Uh, Floyd used up Ricky Hatton, so the Hatton that Pacquiao knocked out was not the real Hatton. Uh, they also said, uh, I never remember you really beating up Marquez anyway. Um, and one of your biggest knockouts was against David Diaz. They're actually using the name David Diaz as a down, as a negative for Pacquiao. So Oscar was old. Um, Hatton was used up by Floyd. Um, you didn't even beat Marquez completely, and... Um, David Diaz fought you better than even Oscar did, and definitely fought you better than uh, than Floyd did. Um, that's, that's a sad thing about boxing. That's what they do. They chop people well, that's, down. That's what's wrong with they ch they'll that's slice what's you what's up. David Diaz fought Pacquiao. Honestly, 
He stood there, took those shots, and lasted into the later rounds. Fought him better than Oscar did, fought him better than Hatton did. And said, this guy is ridiculous. I can't even see him throwing the punches. <laughs> I, and and got, when and I got, do see him, I can't do nothing. I and can't he get stayed the in there and did what, what um, Oscar would not do. Oscar would not become someone's highlight reel. So he gave up like a little girl. <laughs> David Diaz stood there and said, you know what? I'm going out on my damn shield. That's why we love David Diaz. And he knew he was took, out. He knew he was out. It took outgunned. some years off his career. Because yeah, it of did, though. It did. It, it, it very possibly did. Another negative to Pacquiao that, that I've been reading a lot about lately is he was handed his title shots as he moved up. As he would move up to a new title, well, to a new weight class. Like, you didn't like that either, though, that he was. That's exactly what I'm saying. I, d I don't like when someone moves up to a new weight class and immediately they get the title shot. The only one I have no problem with is if you're the light heavyweight champion of the world, I think you get a free pass and you should be allowed to challenge for the heavyweight championship of the world. What about cruiserweight? Yeah, well, they always did that before cruiserweight. there was a cruiserweight champion. Before there was cruiser. Now, maybe that r rule should, should pass over to... It, you should be able to move up one belt up and, and become <coughs> equal to the number one contender. And... You should you should be equal to that. Either he has to fight you or he has to fight the number one contender. If you you should at least have to fight one opponent. fight at that weight before you're the champion. <laughs> you can't just walk on it. I don't I don't agree with that. But anyway, okay. What are the whispers behind Cotto? Uh, he's got trouble with speed because Shane Mosley gave him fits. Uh, a lot of people say Shane even won that fight against Cotto. John Luca Bronco. Uh, John. <laughs> how do you say his name? John. John Luca Bronco. He had, gave. Total troubles. He yes, hit he him did. with a lot of clean shots. <clears throat> also, and Margarito, back, you know. uh, Antonio Margarito put a lot of fear into this monster of Cotto with all these, uh, you know, with, with the, the bricks in his in his gloves and everything. I think and, he and got they, that fear back because he has that feeling that basically he had bricks in his gloves. He got the fear back. He got the he got his his uh, confidence back. You confidence. Oh, okay. All right. Um. And and Cotto, one of the negatives to Cotto are all the wars he's been in. War with Margarito, with Claudi, with Mosley, with Quintana. Not that he was really in a war with Zab Judah, but he was in a war with Cesar Bazan, whom he and Timmy were lucky enough to, fu to uh, fight, to meet in Chicago a few years ago. You remember that? UFC Pavilion. Yeah, that was a good while ago. Well, then Ricardo <clears throat> Torres, didn't he knock him? Ricardo Torres messed him up. I mean, there were yeah, a lot that's of... one of the worst fights that he's ever had. Yeah, a lot I mean, of really rocked. rough fights that Cotto's been in. Um, Cotto, on the other hand, though, has earned every title shot he ever got. I was say, I, I hope that we got two minutes left in this segment. I hope we're going to spin this, and our next segment's going to be the, the bolo punch spin of this, because what we're doing right now is we're falling into boxing's bad seed of... I'm just talking about, these are the negatives. We're going to be talking about the positives. We better be talking about the positives. <clears throat> Here's the sparring partners. Cotto, I can't name any of them. They're lefties that are trying to be Pacquiao for eight rounds a day. Pacquiao's chief sparring partner is Jose Luis Castillo, a guy who three years ago, if Pacquiao was moving up the way he is, they would have had to fight. They'd have fought each other two, three years ago. I'm surprised they didn't fight you know, back in that, that time period anyway. He's using a former two-time world champion as his sparring partner. But does Castillo pack the same punch as Cotto? No. Why anymore. is he choosing a guy that can hit it? Why wouldn't he cho choose a junior middleweight that can hit like Cotto does? I don't know. This is who was available. <laughs> I love the fact that he's using Castillo. Castillo I... can move better. Than, than Cotto can. I would think he would choose a guy that could hit his heart. Oh. I don't know. How could you not be happy with Castillo being your sparring partner, dude? I, yeah, it's true that you. it's great to have a Hall of Famer. My you God, you just can't. And there's also been lots of distractions, both with both training camps plus all the monsoons going on in the Philippines. We're going to come right back, and we're going to make our official picks. This is Bola Punch, and then we'll be on out of here. Generation Insurance Family, serving Indiana families for over 80 years.